I come to announce to you there is about to be a resurrection for somebody. When you don't exercise your faith, it will not be strong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must continue to be hearing the word of God. This is Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. Hello and welcome to Get Connected, where God's obedient servant to the nations is Bishop Israel Ade Ajala, who is also the curator of the Worldwide Kindness Revolution. Today's ministry, message, and teaching will bless you. Today's topic is authority in Christ. And today, your life with God's authority will be changed. Here is Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. I want to welcome you to the month of June once again. I know God is going to bless you this month as we talk on new authority. But we are going to look throughout this whole month on authority in Christ. And there is no better place to start than to look into the book of Ephesians. And I will suggest to all of you that will continue to go with me through this journey, that you read the six chapters of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is a book that is divided into two parts. One is your position in Christ, and then the other is your privilege in Christ. And one is about your life in Christ, and the other is about your walk in Christ. So the two are very, very important. And until you know your position and who you are, it will be difficult for you to know what is available to you. Listen, if an ambassador of the United States forgets that he's an ambassador and he goes to a country that is another nation and he totally forgot he's an ambassador, even though all the power and the wealth of the United States is available to that man, he will not enjoy it because he has forgotten about uh, who he is and I want you to know the best place to start this journey for me as you and I go through this is to go through the book of Ephesians you know one of the things I love about the book of Ephesians actually is the verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 3 and it says for we are his workmanship yes created for good works mm -hmm. Where is workmanship? So you are the work of God. You are, we are, that's uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He said, For where is workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works? Now, watch this. Which God prepared beforehand. So it's not when you get here that God suddenly makes you his workmanship. He already prepared this beforehand. And that's why I welcome you. To your authority in Christ. I want you to know that looking from a book of Ephesians, uh, you, are, you are starting from the place of advantage. You have advantage over Satan, you have advantage over principality and power, and you must begin to see yourself like that. In fact, when Paul was writing in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, after he finish with all the um, greetings. Uh, my name is Paul. I am an apostle. And I, 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 I pray that you enjoy the favor and the peace of God over your lives, the grace and peace. After he said that, he went straight into verse 3 and he told the people of Ephesus, he said, let's start by thanking God. Let's adore God. Let's bless God. And why? He said, because God has blessed us. Yes. And the word blessed there is he has empowered us with all spiritual empowerment that is out there. It's not the first one, blessed be God, is invocation. 
Let's adore God. Let's yes. worship God. Yes. Let's tell him how great he is. Let's let's let come, let us bow down and worship God. Why he has blessed us. You know, in, because until you realize you are blessed, you will not be able to even think about the blessing. But when you know you are blessed, you know, one thing about me when I was growing up in life is especially when I moved to Denver and I have to pay bills, you know, I, I get more comfortable and confident when I realize that what I have in the bank is way more than the bills I'm going to pay. Yeah. How many, I mean, many of you will remember that that's the truth. We just have this confidence, <laughs> the way we carry ourselves. Yes. I know I owe nobody when the end of the month come, it's just a check. Sometimes you even put it on auto pay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't put your mortgage on auto pay when there is nothing there. You know, you know, if you have to count it to the last mm -hmm. penny, you know, but I mean, the, the bank will say, can we do auto pay? You say, you're on your own if you do it on auto pay because there is nothing to automatically right. pay there. But when you have enough and there is left over, you say, oh, just put it on auto pay. What about your car note? Auto pay. What about, uh, in fact, your denture? Auto pay, you know, because you have enough. money, enough. Yes. But where you have to count the last cent, you can't put it on auto pay. Paul said, give God an auto praise for oh, he has already put good. your blessing that's on auto good. pay. Give God some auto, pray, auto praise. Good. Give him some auto praise. Give, put your praise on auto. Mm -hmm. Why? You are lavished with God's blessing. You see, you, are, you, you have so much blessing and every blessing that is in heaven You've been blessed. Yeah. It, it gives you a confidence mm -hmm. that in the committee of the rich, I am one of them. You see, I was telling some, I think it was my brother I was speaking to, the attitude of the oppressed is different from the attitude of the blessed. blessed. Because it's all about attitude. And if four, if four friends are working together as friends, and two of them are rich and the two are not, are not rich, any time they come together, the two rich will sit next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and the two broke will sit next to each other. And then, and all of them are friends. Yeah. And if the two rich are laughing, and they didn't tell the two poor why they are laughing, the two poor will say they are talking about us. <laughs> you become so sensitive, overly yeah. sensitive. You know, and that's what Paul was trying to say. Hey guys, let's start from auto praise. Why? You've been auto-blessed. Your blessing is on auto. He said you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It's not that you will be blessed. You are already, already blessed. blessed. You know, he said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Mm -hmm. I go around like a blessed person. And if you are blessed, the way you talk will be different. Blessed people walk blessed, talk blessed, act blessed. But if you are not sure, then there is a problem. It's a every spiritual blessing. And then I want you to look at what is. In verse 4, he said, he chose you. You didn't choose him. He says, just as he chose us in him. Not only were you blessed, you were chosen. In other words, what does that mean? You are special. You are unique. You are not just ordinary. So if God says you are special and you just call yourself, I'm just ordinary human being, who is lying? Is it you or God? God can never lie. It is you that forget that you are special. You see, yes. if you watch inauguration of President of the United States, as soon as they declare them president and they know, after they give their speech watch the way they walk yeah. back there will be some swag and some yes. confidence i am now the leader of the free world in fact the, the next to god on earth it's me that consciousness come i watched george bush his hand was hanging yeah. like this after and i watch obama he has some swag. swag and even donald trump he has his own walk everyone even brother biden he also has his own work. I mean, the consciousness of the fact that I am now the president of the United States. 
gives to them a sense, consciously or unconsciously, yes. of some bravado mm -hmm. that, yes, I'm no longer ordinary. I mean, imagine you waking up and you are doing like this, like, and, and then there's no secret service around you. You, 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 are, you, are, just, you are just doing exercise. That's all. You know, God has loved you so much that he has placed everything that heaven has at your disposal. Yeah. It's very important you realize that. You must realize that. Let me tell you some of the things God has done for you. As long as you are in Christ, number one, you are blessed in Christ. Number two, you are chosen in Christ. Number three, you are adopted by Christ. Yes. Number four, you are lavished with love in Christ. Number five, you are redeemed and forgiven in Christ. Number six, you are participant in God's good plan in Christ. Yes. Number seven, you are glorified in Christ. Number eight, you are made alive in Christ. Number nine, you are created in Christ. Number 10, you are brought near to God in Christ. Number 11, you are growing in Christ. Number 12, you are built in Christ. Number, number 13, you are sharer in God's promises in Christ. You got the picture? I'll be right back after this. Thank you so much, Bishop. What a powerful word indeed on the topic of authority in Christ. I know that you've been blessed. I know you want to hear more and more is coming. But remember before I, we take our break that God has auto blessed you. So put on some auto praise. We'll be back right after this. Kingdom Connection Christian Center's free food bank is open to all. Our food bank is open every Thursday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We are located at 1391 Oswego Street in Aurora, Colorado. For more information, call 720-859-1737. Join us for our Sunday services every Sunday at 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. Also join us for our Spanish ministry services every Sunday at 2.30 p.m., beginning March 19th. Download the Ade Ajala Ministries app on the Google Play and Apple iOS stores. Watch us on YouTube at Ade Ajala Ministries. Please like and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Bishop Ade Ajala and connect with us on Facebook at Bishop Ade Ajala and Kingdom Connection Christian Center. Welcome back to Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. What an invigorating topic today, Bishop. Yes. Authority in Christ. Yes. And I just sat here and just loved how you took the word and you took us on that journey and helped us to understand the authority that we really have in Christ. Yes. But Bishop, you brought it home. When you start talking about when we realize that we're blessed, we act differently. Yes. When we don't realize that we're blessed. Yeah. We don't have that swag. We yes. don't have that confidence. Yes. We don't have that attitude. Yes. So Bishop, for those of us who are in the listening audience today, and who are saying, Bishop, I find myself being one who forget that I'm blessed mm -hmm. because I'm going through so much. Mm -hmm. It seems as if the enemy is attacking on every side. Mm -hmm. How can I bring that revelation of really walking as a blessed believer more brilliant or brighter in my presence? Good. The consciousness of the fact that you are broke is a function of your thinking. You constantly think about you are broke. You are conscious, you constantly live in the consciousness that you are broke. That same effort that you put into thinking you are broke, just apply it to the thinking that you are blessed and things will fall in line. 
Did you get what I'm saying? Yes. When people begin to think all the time I'm broke, all the time I'm broke. Well, thinking that you are broke does not change the fact that you are broke. It just confirms that you are broke. Yes. But you need to change that thinking. And that is where the ministry of John the Baptist is so important. Even before the, ad, the advent of Christ, the ministry of John the Baptist repents. Yes. Change the way you think. Yes. The kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus came and said, Repent, just like John said. But the kingdom is not coming, it's already here. So there must be a constant change in the way you think and see yourself. Regardless of what is going on, it is something you must do. It's an assignment. I give you an assignment, my brother, my sister that is listening to me. Think blessed for 21 days. And just constantly. Once your mind wants to go to the fact that you are broke, Think blessed. And remind yourself what I have in the bank is not what determines that I'm blessed. What you have in the bank is determined by, I mean, is what determines what the world says you are rich. You can be rich and not be blessed. Because it is not, you are not blessed because you are rich. You are rich because you are blessed. Yes. And so you must start from the fact that you are blessed and riches will come to you. But if you think about riches alone, the Bible says it is that which fades away. Most of the people that fail to see themselves blessed think of riches instead of blessing. That's why I say change the That's way you good. think. That's good. You think about how rich you are. Mm -hmm. And then you say, oh, Bishop, you don't understand. I can't pay this. I don't have money. You are only thinking of how rich you are. But that is putting the cat before the horse. You must always remember how blessed you are. Yes. You know, if, 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 if I know how blessed I am, I will walk from blessing into riches. Every blessed person that walk on the fact that they are blessed will end up being rich. But if you start from being rich, you will be frustrated. You know, the flimsiness of riches is not, is not dependable. One thing that is dependable is the validity, the reality, the authenticity of being blessed. You are blessed. You must always think I'm blessed. You know, what makes people to always see that that makes people to feel inferior to other people is still the same. Mm -hmm. He has more than I do. Mm -hmm. He may be able to have money more than you, but it does not mean he's blessed more than you. And if you will work on the fact that you are blessed, ideas will begin to come that will bring you from never enough to more than enough. And you can easily catch up with people that are rich. That is why it's important that you don't celebrate riches. Give God some praise for being blessed. Yes. There was a time Warren Buffett was the richest man in the world. And then all of a sudden it was Bill Gates. And then all of a sudden it's Jeff Bezos. Then all of a sudden, is this young brother, this brother, young brother from South Africa, called what's his um, um, what's his name again? The owner of uh, Tesla. Oh, yes. eh? Moss Africa. You see, I'm getting younger every day. <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He suddenly showed up and he became the richest man in the world. Then, over a period of time, another brother showed up from France. And you see how flimsy that one is? Yes. How do you judge that? Now, now, how do you judge that? But the truth is, when Buffett already be, was already a rich man, very rich man, Elon Musk was still in high school. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So, simply because somebody is rich today does not mean you can catch up with them. Yes. But blessing, ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you are blessed, yes. 
<laughs> you are consistent in your growth. Bless means empowered to succeed. If you are empowered to succeed, it is now left to you realizing how much you have been empowered to use the power that has been put in you to create riches. That's why blessed people will not be rich equally. Simply because you are blessed, I mean blessed, doesn't mean you'll be rich equally. There is what is called the grace, you know, that you receive. You know, you know, when you know you are blessed and you begin to walk on that blessing that yes. God has empowered you with, yes. riches will come. That's why it says, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and add no sorrow. Every blessed man have the potential to become rich. Every blessed man have the potential to become rich. Every rich man that is not blessed have the potential to go bankrupt. See the difference? Yes. Every rich person who is not blessed by the Lord have the potential to go bankrupt. But every blessed man in God have the potential to become rich. And they will stay rich as long as they realize that they have been blessed. That is why I will say to the person that is saying, you know, I've gone through so much. How do I have the consciousness uh, that I'm blessed? Yes. Number one, you must meditate on the word of God constantly. Meditate on it. It is the meditation that brings revelation. Revelation brings transformation. When you meditate, meditation will take you into the place of revelation. As you meditate on the word of God, the word of God will be revealed, will get bigger. The word will become flesh and you will, you will see the glory of the word. And then when that revelation comes, you walk upon that revelation it brings transformation. You move from glory to glory. People will begin to say, wow, in our presence, it becomes this, it becomes that. Most of the time we feel, we meditate, again, thinking, we meditate so much on what we don't have that we have no time meditating on how, or thinking on how we can get what we already have in the spirit realm. I don't look at anybody's wealth and say, wow, I just mm -hmm. look at what God has given me and yes. work on myself. It's just like when people say, I'm managing time. <laughs> How do you manage that which is fixed? The word time management is actually person's management. You manage yourself in time. And which one of those part of you can you manage? Your body? Yeah, you can to some extent by what you eat. Can you manage your spirit? Absolutely, by what you eat also, the word of God. But most especially your soul. How do you manage yourself in time? That's about soul. So if you can think about the fact that you are blessed, if you can see yourself blessed, even though money is not yet there, oh, my brother, my sister, the next thing you see is that the manifestation of those blessings begin to happen in your life. You know, to meditate also is also another word is to be. When you meditate in the word, it means you dwell in the word. Because as you are meditating in the word, the word is changing the way you think. It's changing your perspective. It's changing the way you relate. It's changing the way you talk. It's changing things that you do. You are doing certain things. You say, no, I'm not doing that no more. Those are the things that will bring you to that place where people now will begin to see the manifestation of the blessing upon your life. But simply because you are not enjoying the blessing right now does not mean you are not blessed. In fact, you've been blessed before you showed up. Your blessing is on auto. <laughs> God put your blessing on auto. In other words, it, you are blessed. Mm -hmm. Whether you know it or not, you are blessed. It is to your own advantage that you know it, you realize it, you walk in it, and begin to um, now take that blessing to produce riches. You see? And that is why until, you, until we as believers get that part very well, we will struggle to get into abundance and overflow. And then 
The danger is that when you run, 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 and you didn't get to over, over, overflow and abundance, you will begin to think, enemy will be suggesting to you it's not God's will. And then you will buy into that lie that it's not God's will. All of, not all of us will be rich. Yeah, because not, not all of you will do what blessed people should be doing to bring riches. You don't be like them. You are special. Let me pray with you before I go. We continue next week. Father, I thank you for the beginning of this great word that you have given me, that I'm giving and sharing with my brothers and sisters. But Lord, let life of this word go into them and produce results so that everyone listening to me will start from the reality of the fact that they are blessed and they will walk into your riches. In Jesus' name, I declare healing to you that are sick and I declare you know, open door to you that are trusting God for a new door to open for you. Each one of you listening to me, this month you will have testimonies. Till we meet again next week, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of the radio ministry of Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. For more information, contact Bishop Israel Ade Ajala by email at info at kcconline.org or by phone at 720-859-1737.